Steven Universe has always had a subtle approach to communicating information. There are no good episodes. Good world building takes time. I'm sorry, but the supervising director can't honestly believe there are no filler episodes. Together Breakfast, Fribo, Arcade Mania. I heard the quote of, there are no filler episodes, and busted out laughing. Yes, yes, there are many, many, many unnecessary and filler episodes in SU, like way too many. Honestly, I can't agree with the quote, there are no filler episodes, knowing that Rock Naldo exists. There are no filler episodes? I stopped watching the show for a bit because I was stringed along for 11 minutes when Steven was trying to find out who his sister was. Passing the video at the quote, there are no filler episodes, stares in, say uncle. There are no filler episodes? Ba ha ha! OMG! I burst out right there! Steven Universe is riddled with filler! And with the chief problem during runtime of having seasonal gaps between Sadi joining a band, whilst Lars in space gets shafted! OMG, they gotta fire whoever said that! There are no filler episodes. P please! Okay, since you all wanna talk about it, let's talk about it. Filler refers to stories that exist purely as padding. It's a term often used about anime. When a manga adaptation starts catching up with the source material, it may use filler to stall for time. Filler might also be employed by shows with a large number of episodes, soap operas, procedural dramas, and the like. Low-budget, low-effort episodes can ease workloads and help meet deadlines. But Steven Universe isn't a procedural or an adaptation, so technically, none of its episodes are filler. This video was supported by my patrons. If you'd like to support the channel... Uh, uh, Alright, fine, fine, I'll do it properly. When people talk about filler in Steven Universe, what they're really talking about are the types of episode that are commonly used as filler. Light entertainment, small-scale, character-driven stories that don't have any impact on the overarching plot. The sort of thing that might slow down narrative momentum, feel tonally out of place, or is just downright bizarre. Hey, I've been turned into a cow. Can I go home? You're excused. The term filler is often used to mean episodes you can skip without missing anything important. There are no filler episodes? I get the message, but SU definitely has meaningless episodes. In my previous Steven Universe video, I used this quote by supervising director Ian Jones Quarty to back up my main point about subtlety in world building. But I'm not daft. I knew some people were going to disagree with this, and I drafted out this whole rebuttal in anticipation of that. But it just got too far into the weeds, so I ended up cutting it. But this time, we're getting right into those weeds, baby, so buckle up. There are 154 distinct episodes in the original Steven Universe run. Each of the five seasons has an arc, an overarching narrative that links the episodes together and builds to a dramatic finale. Season 1 is different in that it kind of has two arcs, building to a mid-season two-parter as well as a finale. So that's six arcs total. And if we count how many episodes actually advance these arcs in a meaningful way, I'd say that's only 45 of them. But wait, there's also four mini-arcs, small clusters of episodes linked by a smaller narrative. They each tie into the season arc in some way, but mostly don't really advance it. Regardless, they are dramatic events, and have a big impact on the characters. Nobody would call this filler. Which leaves us with 96. If Jones Quarty is to be believed, those are taken up by world building. And there's definitely some truth to that. As I've said before, what may seem like a frivolous story might actually be communicating something very important. For instance, the episodes mentioned in this comment. Arcade Mania teaches us about Garnet's unique powers. Garnet just has heightened perception that guides us towards our mission objectives. It clarifies her role within the Crystal Gems, and it's the first time we see her third eye. 
Frybo is the first introduction of inanimate objects being powered by gemstones, a recurring theme that will become hugely relevant to Stephen. See my other video for more on that. And Together Breakfast is the first time we see inside the gem temple. It shows us how the door works, we see the temple's trippy geography, the important locations within it, and even get a hint about Rose's room. Oh hey! This isn't so bad! <laughs> a detail which winds up becoming essential in a later episode. I know there's a way down from here. Thank you! Steven Universe is a dense, sprawling sci-fi fantasy universe, so there are some crucial things we need to know about. For starters, basic gem physiology. We need to understand how gems work and what they can do. Then there's everything to do with the crystal gems, like how the temple works, but also who they are, where they came from, what their powers are. Next, everything about homeworld, who Stephen's enemies are, what they want from Earth, and the oppressive culture they live in. Then there's history, things that happened during the gem war. And the thorniest of subjects, everything about Rose. However, as I've said, the world building in Steven Universe is subtle, sometimes invisibly so. Yeah, some of them might feature a gem MacGuffin, but we don't advance the overall plot of the show, or the world. And I have to agree that the inclusion of a crucial detail doesn't really advance the narrative if you don't know it's there. Take the episode most vehemently accused of being filler. Stare as in, say uncle. Some commenters have defended Say Uncle, arguing it contains the first hint of Steven's true identity. You should make sure you get this thing polished at least twice a year. Uncle Grandpa says, You should make sure you get this thing polished at least twice a year. Most professionals recommend that you polish a diamond at least twice a year to keep it perfect and pristine. And, sorry, this is a bit of a reach. Even if this is intentional, so what? It means nothing on a first viewing and is never referenced again, hardly enough to save an episode that's not even canon. Or take the episode this comment is about, Lion 4 Alternate Ending. This one does contain a crucial detail, Chekhov's giant pink leg spaceship. You can't skip it, otherwise this would seem to come out of nowhere, but it's a background detail. It's only relevant in hindsight. When watching this episode for the first time, it will still feel like filler. There are a handful of episodes like this, which contain something important that mustn't be skipped, but focus on something that has nothing to do with that. For this, they must be struck from the record. But before we get too hung up on narrative utility, we should talk about character. Steven Universe has, by my count, 16 main or supporting characters who have an arc or undergo some significant development which ties into the larger narratives, or is a lion who keeps plot secrets in his mane. Thematically, the show is about growth and change, so this stuff is relevant, but when your episodes have an 11 minute runtime, it's harder for this stuff to crop up naturally. Some episodes will need to focus on crucial character beats like episodes which introduce one of these key characters, episodes which pivot around a moment of growth or a change of heart, or develop a relationship, for the better or for the worse, or reveal important backstory, or have someone, usually Stephen, learning a new power. And sometimes it's just necessary to check in on how the characters are feeling about the plot, Lion 4 isn't about Stephen's secret sister, it's about how Stephen feels about the weight of his mother's legacy, and how he takes on responsibilities he doesn't need to. There has to be something I was meant to do! And sure, you could skip this, and you'd probably be fine. But without it, I feel you wouldn't fully understand Stephen's motivations in the season finale. I get it now! I'm the only one who can stop what she started! Without character, plot doesn't mean anything. Filler stories may tend to focus on character, sure, but they are often criticised for not having any lasting impact. When Steven Universe does it, it develops and expands on its characters. But I'm glossing over the real problem here, aren't I? It's one thing to have a feelings episode about the main or supporting characters, 
What about when it happens for minor characters? When people refer to filler, they usually talk about the towny episodes, which provide little to no world building for Homeworld. The problem with Steven Universe is the towny episodes, where we get an episode focused on a random person from town instead of Steven and the gems. Those episodes are filler. The real filler is the freaking towny episodes. I love this show, but my god, do I hate the towny episodes. I get why these are controversial. The townies, or bawdies as the Crooniverse first called them, are tertiary characters who have little to do with the main plot. They can feel like a distraction, but I don't think it's fair to say they serve no purpose. At the time, I was reading a lot of Dr. Sump, the Akira Toriyama comic. It has this great small town feel. All of the recurring characters live and work together in a tight-knit environment. That inspired my idea where Stevens Town would have this boardwalk and there would be all these different shops and the characters would live above the shops. The boardwalk consolidated the human world for Steven and became a finite, specific place that we could come back to you again and again. If the Crystal Gems are defending Earth, they need something to defend. More than just nameless extras and a bunch of buildings. Steven has a connection to Beach City and to humanity because he has connections to the people who live there. It's where we spend pretty much all of our time, so it's worth creating a sense of place. As showrunner Hamish Steele said about his show Dead End Paranormal Park. I love that our show hits the ground running, literally, and we made a tight 10 episodes, but those shows which people bemoan having filler episodes are very lucky. Would have loved to show more slice of life stuff around the park, but our plot moves a bit too quickly. Some of this is just a matter of taste. Like, personally, I don't get Onion. I don't dislike him, I just don't understand what he's for. But other people do. Maybe a minority, but still, I'm not sure it's fair to say he has no value just because he does nothing for me. By my count, there are 38 episodes which focus on a townie. 16 of those also fulfil another function I've already mentioned, so really it's 22 pure towny episodes, 3 or 4 per season. Which isn't insubstantial, but feels like fewer than people make out. I'm not saying these episodes are flawless, but I wonder if people's opinion of them is somewhat coloured by context. And with the chief problem during runtime of having seasonal gaps between Sadi joining a band, wireless Lars in space gets shafted! This comment is wild to me, because Lars is just as much a townie as Sadie is. Their stories are linked. What happens to Lars affects Sadie. And Lars is still in space! And what happens to Sadie affects Lars. She looks really happy without me. It's true Lars is left vaguely in space for a while, and there's a whole conversation about what he was set up for and if plans changed. But if we're talking filler, during Lars's time in space, there are two episodes about him, two episodes about Sadie, and one that catches up with both. They are treated as equally important. So I don't see how Lars's story was shafted in favour of Sadie's. But I get it. In space, Lars is more involved with gem stuff, and by season 5, that's really beginning to heat up, which wasn't exactly helped by the release schedule. I think people only complain because of the long wait for 11 minute episodes. It'd be fine if the episodes were longer and more consistent. Waiting so long for progress in the plot just for world building can be disappointing. The schedule of later seasons was very erratic, with long hiatuses between sudden Steven bombs. If you're invested in the main narrative, and you've waited a long time to see it progress, yeah, Sadie joining a band might feel like a waste of precious time. Gemcation is another such episode, because though it flirts with the main narrative, There are things that are impossible for me to explain, but I want to. I... It doesn't advance anything, because Stephen ignores it. Connie hates me! What? I've already counted this episode as part of a mini-arc, as well as an important character beat. It's definitely a necessary palate cleanser after a very dramatic four-part season opener. But considering the six-month gap between these episodes, I can understand why it made people impatient. I think the Crooniverse did what they could to structure their plots around the schedule, but ultimately, scheduling is outside their control. It's not always possible to avoid problems with pace. 
And while it's fair to be irritated by a low-stakes episode after a long wait, that doesn't make it filler. Rewatching the show without those gaps will frame those stories differently. So, sorry, but I'm counting the Townie episodes as necessary. If you disagree about that or any of my choices, I'm happy to litigate it in the comments. Come at me, Ronaldo haters. My point is, for the majority of Steven Universe episodes, a case can be made for their usefulness. So I don't think it deserves its reputation for filler. And I don't think Jones Quarty was lying when he said Steven Universe doesn't have any. As far as the crew's concerned, the show's approach to world building is very meticulously designed. To me, the most interesting part is that Steven believes he's having this really fun comedy child adventure until he realises the world isn't actually like that, and then it starts to change. I always have this plan that the gem world is like the adult world. In Steven's headspace, there are these adults all around him that are going through stuff and he can't understand. And as he's turning that corner and growing up, he's starting to realise what it is. The show wants to create the sensation of being a child, and being kept in the dark for your own good. Um, you guys want to talk? And why would we need to do that? So the story is paced slowly, drip-feeding information in pieces, telling you there's something, without telling you what it is. And yeah, it's frustrating. But that's kind of the point. It's lucky something has some information that I don't have to get out of them! I'm not saying Steven Universe is beyond criticism, I just think it deserves a better kind of criticism. We can talk about editing and pacing, but I think we miss out if we assume anything that isn't absolutely crucial must be worthless. Do we really believe that art is at its best when stripped down to its barest essentials? Is there really nothing more to story than efficient communication of relevant information? Stories aren't just trying to tell you something, they're about making you feel something. It's easy to lose sight of that when you treat narrative as a mathematical equation that must be solved. So actually, this whole spreadsheet is dumb and pointless and a waste of time. Because there are still 13 episodes left over. According to this paint-by-numbers approach to storytelling, these episodes should be filler. And looking at them, yeah, I'd say you probably could skip them without it much impacting the overall story. And yet, I don't think any of these episodes are bad. Garnet's Universe is a silly pastiche of anime. Kindergarten Kid is a silly send-up of Roadrunner. <coughs> Steven and the Stevens is darkly comic. The New Crystal Gems is whimsical chaos. And Say Uncle is just funny. It's not even canon, so just chill out about it, okay? Filler gets a bad rap. I mean, it's not entirely undeserved. It can be frustrating when episodes feel like they're deliberately wasting time. But I don't think it's necessarily wrong for a story to have fun just for fun's sake. Particularly when your show is trying to evoke the perspective of a child. Particularly when that child is Steven. You're Steven. You love schmaltz. There's a lot of darkness in Steven Universe. But it is, first and foremost, a joyful story. Spending a little time to take joy in things isn't pointless, quite the opposite. There may well be episodes you can skip without losing track of the plot, but if you do that, I think you'd miss what the show is really about. What is the point? You're not making anything. Well, if it isn't anything, then why does it sound so good? If you'd like to see me respond to more Steven Universe comments, I've made a bonus video doing exactly that, exclusive to my Patreon. You can join at patreon.com slash jameswoodall, where you can see that and other bonus content. You can also support the channel on Ko-fi at ko-fi.com slash jameswoodall. And of course, you can always like the video, share, or subscribe. And if you disagree with me in the comments, who knows, maybe I'll turn that into content too. As you can see, I'm very easily baited. Thanks for watching.